Look, uh, fly through the air as I had to fulfill my purpose to shake the whole earth with a boom. So, as we're reading the Bible, I want you to listen to this and so you can catch up to speed to where we at. Read that. 68. Yep. Luke chapter 1 and verse 68. Watch this time. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and have raised up in horn of salvation for us. Okay, so what we're dealing with, we read in John 8, 32, where it says, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tris, I got a question for you. Do you think that you're free right now? And what does that mean to be free? Everybody. Everything. Everything. No, I mean, okay. When you're saying that you're free, what does that mean to you? Like, what, what is your classification of free? Because you say you're free. Okay, Yo, Okay. so now watch this. I'm going to show you something heavy. We're going to come right back here, but go to Baruch 3. Baruch 3 and 8. So now I'm going to show you something. You stated that you're free, but I'm going to show you what the scripture says on what freedom looks like or what it doesn't look like. I'm going to ask you a question, and I want you to tell me if this is free right here. What's your name again? Tracy. Tracy, Tommy, and Arthur. All right, got you. Watch this. Read this. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. So are we free today? Let's read and see. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So Baruch says, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. You know what the word captivity means? What's another word for captivity? Hostage. Hostage? What else? I'm looking for a word that starts with an S. Oh. oh. <laughs> there you go. So Baruch, who was a prophet of God, during the time when Jeremiah and all them was on the scene, not a slave. he says, I'm not a slave. Not a slave. but check this out. Tommy, Tommy, check this out. Listen closely to how Baruch classified himself. Huh? I got I to I speak for the Lord. You guys are not slaves. Y'all are uh, prosperous men. King, K-I-N-T. Okay, I, I, I reverence that. All praises. I appreciate you for that. But I want to show you something. You got a prophet here named Baruch. And he's about to explain to you, Tommy, he's about to explain to you a prophet of God who God is dealing with is about to explain to you what captivity or what slavery looks like to him, that he's not free. And we'll see, we'll, we'll speak further as we read about it. Read. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, where thou hast scattered us. So there's a particular people who Baruch classifies himself to be with to say we have been scattered. Meaning we have one homeland, but we're not there no more. We're scattered. Read. For a reproach. And wherever we're scattered at, we're a reproach to those people that we're scattered at. Meaning that we're hated, we're treated differently. That's what Baruch is saying. Now, you might think that I'm talking about us literal today because guess what? It correlates. But watch this. Read. And a curse. So he says, we've been scattered, we've been made a reproach, and a curse. And I'm going to show you about curses in a minute. Read. And to be subject to payments. So question for you, Tracy. Are we subject to payment today? Yeah. How are we subject to payment? Rent, there life, you go. There you go. Food, you got a car? Cars, cars, yeah. Yeah, there you go. When you got a car, even if you paid that car off, what happened? You got to pay for the registration fees, all these different things. You got to pay for the state inspection. So in reality, and all this is government uh, organized, right? In reality, guess what? That's not freedom. Freedom. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Freedom would be, you ain't got to worry about paying nothing. You're free from everything. Right. And I got another, I got something I'm going to hit you to. You got a dial on you? Okay, do you got a dial on you, Tommy? Okay, I don't want it. Can you pull it out for me? I want to show you something. How they got the black man hanging in the back while everybody around? I wasn't going to deal with that because I, I, I really <laughs> forgot about that, to be honest with you. Yeah. But that's on point. But watch this. I, I want us to look at that dollar. I want us to look at that dollar. Open it up. Now, my question to you is, Arthur, I want to ask you this. Whose face is on that dollar? Right. Now, that mean, you know what that means? That means that that currency belonged to him. Just like how 
If you ever heard about the Persians, you had a great king during that time named Xerxes. Guess what? That was his kingdom, the Persian Medes kingdom, and his face was on it. Guess who was in rulership? His people was in rulership. You understand my point? Same thing correlating with that. And when you, when you speak about being subject to payments, that means that you as a people yourself, you have to pay for everything. There's nothing that comes your way that just get handed to you. Now, I'm going to show you something. That's what Baruch said during the time of when the uh, Persians and, uh, and then was in the rulership. But let's deal with us today and let's see how the Bible pertains to us because he says we're under curses. Now watch this. Get through Romans 28, 15. I want to thank you guys for being out here today. No problem. No, no problem. No problem. They need the word. They need it. I got to go back to Sister, I got, I got something. All right, look. I understand. Give me five minutes. You and Fiesta, right? Give me five minutes and then you go out right back over there. Because I got to show you this. I have to. I got to thank you guys as well. Yes, sir. I don't want that. Yes, sir. But watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 15. Watch this. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all of these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Okay, so just to make sure y'all listening, why did God say curses would come upon us? Why did he say that? He just explained it to us. He said, it shall come to pass if we didn't hearken unto his commandments, but we decide to go contrary, that curses would come upon us. Do you know who he's talking to right here? Who is this people? Who is us? There you go. Who are the Israelites today? Did you know that? Did you know that the black people, the so-called blacks, are the Israelites? Huh? Say it again. Did you know that the blacks in America are the children of Israel in this Bible? Did you know that? Yeah, the, uh, Israel, it was in my mind just the other day, the day before yesterday. I was talking but to I myself. All right, real quick. Because, uh, yeah, go, go, give, give verse 48. I'm going to speed it up just for you. Give yeah. verse 48. So now, Baruch said, behold, we're in captivity where we're subject to payments and we're reproached to the people that we're around. Yeah. Guess what? That's the same thing that's happening today. When you read about God, sis, God loves the Israelites. That's who you are. But then dealing with that love that he has towards you, when we start to go contrary to God's commandments, God says his judgment is like a ring. Do you know how a ring operates? A ring goes full circle. Meaning that when we do things that are contrary to him, during that time period when we left out of Egypt, he says, guess what? Curses have come upon you. That's why we went to Babylon as slaves. When you read about the Persian Medes, guess what the Israelites were in slavery. When you read about Rome, when Christ and the apostles was walking this earth, guess what? That was the Roman kingdom and the Israelites were slaves. Same thing that's happening in America. Why are these things happening? Because what? Because we broke the commandments of God. Now, watch this, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve. Thy enemy. So we read verse 15 earlier where God says, you disobey me, curses will come upon you. Now we read all the way down. We have verse 48. He says what? Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Why? Because we made God angry. We broke his commandments. So he says, you know what? I'm going to cause you to serve your enemies. Read. In hunger. So now, dealing with us being in captivity, you said you was free earlier. But then guess what? You go eat a fiesta, a place where you give your money to, where you don't own nothing in there, and guess what? You have to buy food. Who do you buy it from? God says your enemies. Right. Three. And in third, same place. We can use fiesta by example, Walmart. You can go to McDonald's here. Any place where you can think of for food or water, it's another nation of people. In particular, right. the same people that brought us here on slave ships and took all of our, our culture from us and made sure we could read and write. Guess what? Now we're serving them for everything. Right. Read. And in nakedness. Read. And in want of all things. So anything that you can think of, birth certificate, death right. certificate, right. education, right. even understanding how to reverence God. Why do you think you're taught a white Jesus or a white right. God? Why do you think when you go to these churches, they have these white angels all around the churches? Because we're serving our enemies for the want of all things. Right. Do you believe that God was a white person? What color was he according to the Bible? How was he described? That's correct. But then why are they having in all these churches? I'm more than positive your grandmother might. if She she probably took it down. I hope she did. It's, it's 2022 now. But she might have had that white image in a house somewhere at one point in time. 
You know why? Because everything we learned, we learned from the same enemies that oppressed us. Right. And they fed us all of what they wanted to teach us. Why is that? Because we broke the commandments of God. However, I'm going to show you something different. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron. So when you look at these images right here, that Bible is prophetic. This Bible was not altered or wasn't mistranslated with the things that's written in it. So when it spoke about the blacks having uh, yokes of irons on their neck, that happened. That's Bible prophecy. God's word came true. Now, when it came true, God says, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck, talking about our enemies, until what? Until he have destroyed thee. So why do you think we're not walking around with yokes of irons on our necks anymore? No, read that again. As you were. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So when did God say the enemies will take the yoke of irons off our neck? Did he destroy them? No. Until he, that enemy, have destroyed us. Because oh, wow. it says he shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed you. Yeah. Guess what, sis? Why don't we have yokes of iron on our necks anymore? No, because we're destroyed. That's what God is saying right there. We're going to have yokes of iron upon our neck until we're destroyed. Have you heard of that Willie Lynch letter? Have you heard of that book? No. So when you, I want you to do do a favor and look into this. I know you got to go. I can see it. You're anxious. You want to stay here. You don't want to be disrespectful. You got to go back to work. I understand. I really want you to look more into this, sis. But to, uh, to give you the understanding behind Willie Lynch, Willie Lynch was a book that was written by a white man. And when he wrote this book, he wrote it with the intentions of comparing the Negro slave, quote unquote, Negro slave, to how a horse is to be broken. Right. And when a horse is to be broken, it becomes submissive. Right. To where now it's in a cycle of that submission state, even with the generations to come after. To where once you dealt with that first a horse, you broke it, no more need to deal with the children. They're going to be submissive because they're going to only do what their father and their mother did. Right. Guess what? That's us. We're broken. We're slaves. We're submissive. You see what I'm saying? That's why the yokes of iron is not upon our necks anymore. And why is that? Because we broke the commandments of God. God says he's going to have our enemies. So they're going to reign over us. They're going to destroy us. And we're going to, and they're going to put yokes of iron until we destroy it. But sis, I'm going to give you a solution to that problem. I know you got to go, so I'm going to just give you one solution. So now get uh, Acts 3.19 and then Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Okay, as you're walking away, take your time walking backwards. Walk backwards, take your time and listen. Read. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. So Tracy, repentance is those things that we broke to make God angry against us when we broke his commandments, that's called sin. So God is saying to repent. Now what's an example of repentance? When you hear what God say to do, I'm sorry, when you hear what God say what to do or what not to do, and you make sure you follow his guidelines. If he, if he say don't do this, your repentance would be not to do that. If he say do this, your repentance would be to do it. So watch this, Deuteronomy 22 and 5, read. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So Tracy, what does a woman wear that belongs to men? That's right. So listen to that closely again, read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Right. So just how it's understandable to say a man should not be walking around in women attire, God is saying contrary. Women should not be walking around with the attire of a man. God considers that to be cross-dressing. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, these are how we men repented at heart, 
The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth